Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Milligan. We're here at the ADA meeting in Orlando, Florida, so there may be a little bit of background noise, but I've got Brent Thompson of TechScan with the instrument T-Scan here out of Boston. Brent, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Yes, well, you know, uh, we worry about three main things in dentistry, right? We worry about the decay, we worry about the perio, and then we worry about the occlusion in the joints. This is the best instrument out there for the occlusion in the joints. One third of what we're worried about. It, it, it really involves everything, the breakdown of our restorations, yep. of the perio. So this is so important. But can you tell us a little bit about te uh, uh, the T-Scan? Well, the T-Scan is basically a Di a way to get a digital picture of the occlusion. Like the intraoral camera for occlusion. Right. Okay. So in dentistry, one of the problems we have is we, if the patient can't see it or they feel something different than what we're observing, it can get kind of tricky in treating. Oh, you bet. Yeah. And this just gives us the images that we need to, to explain it to the patient right. and the quantifiable, which has been missing, because right. things like articulating paper and waxes, they give us clues. Yeah. But it is not quantifiable, right. it's not evidence-based, and it does not give us any real information about the forces. Right. And in dentistry, there are three things we're supposed to measure in occlusion if you look at the standard textbook type things. Okay. You know, one would be they'd say that all the teeth should come together at the same time. Right. There shouldn't be any prematurities, I guess, in other right. words. Two, uh, in when you're doing lateral excursions or protrusions, you want the posterior teeth to, to, disclude. to disclude immediately, is what right. the textbook says. Now, both those statements imply that there's supposed to be a measurement of time. Right. We've never been able to look at that. When you use articulating paper, you have how all the things hit, and it's all smudged on top of each other. Right. The, the last criteria they talk about is you need to have bilateral balance, so somewhat equal forces, right. left to right, right, and some form of an equal distribution of the forces around the teeth. Okay, absolutely, and, yes. and again, that's saying, how do you quantify that? Well, you put an articulating paper here and one here and say, bite down, it's, right. it's really bad. Okay. And, so and then you say, how does it feel? Yeah. So, so what we've got so far, we know it doesn't work. You know, it's been interesting, and, and we'll talk about this, but, but you can have a little dot with that articulating paper and a big dot, and it's the little dot that's the really the the one that's hitting the hardest and and first and has the most force. So yeah. this tells us that. But anyway, that's right. Why don't you go ahead and now the company is TechScan, T-E-K-S-C-A-N. Uh -huh. Yes. And the instrument is T-Scan. Yes. ToothScan, I guess, is what it stands for. Yeah. Originally, I think so. Yes. Okay. So so tell us a little bit more about this and and how it all works. Okay. Well, very simple device. This is, the handle just plugs into any USB port of a computer. Okay. But the heart of this system yeah. is truly our sensor. Okay. And w if you could see this, there are vertical lines going up and down yep. on the sensor. Yep. And there are horizontal lines. Going the, okay, on the other side is horizontal. So okay. it's a piece of grid paper, grid. electronic grid. Gotcha. But there's an electrically conductive medium in here yep. that as you bite down, we shoot a small electrical voltage through here. Okay. But as you bite down, the changes in the electrical current the, uh, re the relate pressure. to force. Okay. And of course, it also, you know, things turn off and on, right. and that's how we're able to measure the sequence. Okay. So we have like a bunch of little light switches in here, but yep. it's a step above that in that we can tell you how hard that light switch is being pushed. Right. Think of it as a bunch of bathroom scales. Okay. Okay. A bunch of little bathroom scales right here. Yes. Okay. And you can and then you just the put it in it and the and the force. Yeah. So and then that right in there. Then you would you know just go ahead and you would insert it in the mouth. It'd yeah. be much like using articulating paper. Let's go ahead. Let's let's show me here. Okay. So. Sorry, I don't have a glove, but uh, we would just put it in the mouth, like this. I would line up a certain portion on the thing here, and I would have you bite down firmly in your back teeth, open. Bite down again, open. Okay, bite down, slide to your right. So, anything that you do with articulating paper, you can do on top of the sensor. So, I could hold you in centric relation if I wanted. I can take a habitual bite, yep. I can have you do an excursion, I can have you tap, tap, tap. Okay. And any, I mean, just like you can use articulating paper on a denture, 
on a TMJ splint or on right. natural teeth, right, right. you can use it there. And this is so nice because you get the full arch. Yes. All in, all in one little unit there. And the dynamic picture. Absolutely. And we're going to break okay. away and show you that here in just a second. Okay. What else should we know about this while we're just sitting here talking before we break away? Uh, just Have we a, covered the, everything? Uh, pretty much. I think A, that it's just really simple to use. Okay. And frankly, it just tells you what you've been trying to understand from the, from the day you got out right. of dental school or the day you entered, possibly, right. about the occlusion. About and it just gives you the ability to, once and for all, be able to visualize that. Visualize it and really control it and then with that... And express it to can, the patient. You can then actually uh, know exactly where to adjust yes. uh, without any questions. And as you make the adjustments, like this sensor lasts for approximately 15 to 20 bytes. Okay. So you would, like articulating paper, I might make an adjustment. Yeah. And then I would put it back in right. and I would look at it. And you asked me, you know, what would be one of the key criteria that would be different? Because of the timing, we've found, or I believe, that it is timing that you go after first because we're told to look yeah. for prematurities. Right. Well, now we can just, we don't care if it's a high force or a low force because the prematurity is going to affect how the mandible sits into That's the true. maxilla. That's true. So you got to go after the early one. Now we can see that, you, you adjust and you know, did I adjust enough? Do I have yeah. to go a little more? And then you t get the timing so it's all very quick. And then following that, you tweak the forces. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Very good. How do we find more out about you? What's your website? Our website is www.techscan with a K. Okay. Dot com. You got a phone number? Yes. Uh, 800 uh -huh. Bite Now. Okay. Or 800 248 6449. Great. Brent, thanks so much for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. All right, now we're going to show you how easy and accurate this is. All right, thank you. I'll just insert it. When I tell you to, just bite down and close. Bite down, open. Thank you. Okay. And we could also do that in CR or something with bimanual manipulation okay. if we wanted. All right. Okay, now we'll also do a uh, recording of the excursion. Okay. We blow up the window. Okay, so we'll do the excursion. Bite down and hold it. Slide right. Perfect. All right, that's all there is to it. That not, was easy. not a problem at all. We can just have you do it more if we need to. Okay. Okay, so let's look. First, I'm just going to save the data. The first one I'm going to take is uh, we, it was a, a habitual bite. I'm right. just labeling it to help me. Okay. The second one was a right lateral, correct? Correct. So I'll just hit right lateral. That just makes it easier to find in our software. Okay, so you're labeling it so we can go back and find it. Right, okay. like looking for a particular type of bite. Yep. So there we are. So we'll look at our habitual bite to begin with. Okay. There's a lot of data on the screen, but really pretty simply, uh, I'll just explain the basics that you perfect. need to look that's at. What I mean. that's, that's perfect for me. So now that we've explained the T-scan and we've taken some data, it's time to review it. So I'll just give you the basics on that. So what we're looking at here is a three-dimensional view of the forces. So what you see here and what you see here is the same data, but this is three-dimensional. The taller the column and, and the warmer the colors, the greater the force. So like these are low force, they're in the blue. These are higher forces up here in the red and the pink. And the green is kind of a mid-range force level. We have about 13 force gradients to show. Then on the other side, we break it down into a two-dimensional view, a little more like articulating paper. And we can see the same high force mark here, but we've got our tooth numbers, and we give you a left-right percentage so as an example, your bite, as you're com completely closed, you have 52% of your bite on one side, 48% of your bite on the other. That's pretty good. Main thing you're looking for is kind of have this little center of force icon be inside this target, is would be a general rule that you would look at. And then we'll, at this point, we'll just look at how you bite. We'll see the dynamics that we talked about that are so important. 
So I'm going to go to first contact. This, the computer can essentially find that. The first thing we see on the screen is over here on the right side on five and six. We actually will click the mouse and advance forward in time in small increments. So in, you're hitting anterior up here on number eight and you're also over here. So you're anterior and to the right side is where your forces start. As we advance more in time, you can see that force keep picking up. This is something that might on a veneer break or cause you a fremitus or some tissue uh, changes over time. If you had a periodontal issue, maybe that would be something you'd want to correct before as you're treating the perio so it speeds up the health and holds it. So as we keep advancing, see the context change. You can see the center of force because all the forces are here is anterior. As we pick up more bites, it changes. And then the left side starts to come in. And we will just come all the way until you're completely closed. Okay, and there we are. And so that's at the very end and you can see this high force. This is one of those things that would trick some dentists that maybe aren't used to using the T-scan. They'd be thinking about articulation paper marks and the darker or heavier or easier one to see is the high force. And maybe the patient feels this. But we'd be looking at the sequencing first and go after those front teeth that are hitting. Now, so we've got the 50-50 essentially. In this case, now it's 50-50. And per tooth, we tell you the percentage of force as well. So, you know, the dentist could then look at this data, see how it matches up with the clinical uh, signs in the mouth as well as the symptoms that the patient has and whether the patient feels it on this tooth or this tooth you might be able to say oh I think the problem's here or I think the problem's here and it's why and that can be very hard without a tool like this just like it was hard to tell someone why they needed to replace an amalgam before you had the intraoral camera they couldn't visualize it they didn't feel a problem it was hard for them this makes it simple now number two we'll look at the excursion and so I'll, I'll just advance to a certain point. We're just holding our bite. So at about this point, we held our bite. We're going to go into the excursion now, and you moved right. And that is actually why this says right lateral up here. But we can see not only how the teeth engage, but how the teeth disengage. And again, that timing information can be very important. The quicker you disengage, the research is showing, the more comfortable the muscles will be and the less symptoms you'll have of like headaches, that type of thing, myogenous pain. So as we advance, we're going to rotate this around. It'll be a little easier to see at this point. We're thinking of going towards the canine, number six. Now you're hitting on five and you're working off of 15 as well. Okay, so this would be your balancing side interference. Let's keep going. Turn this off, might be easier to see. Now what you would like to see is this side disappear immediately. You'd like to see this side disappear very quickly. And instead of riding up on the cuspid here, of, of the bicuspid, you want to be up maybe on the canine or the anterior teeth, depending on the principles of belief. And in the end, you're, you get some anterior guidance but you're working back here off this molar so there's you can just see the sequence okay so you can see just how simple that is and again you know we look at decay we look at perio and we look at occlusion tmj the three main things in dentistry this finally makes that real the occlusion aspect of this makes it simple it makes it uh, able to see the the amount of force and the timing of the force this is awesome brent Brent, well, thank thanks you very so much. much for showing it to us. You're welcome. Okay, great.